Mike Benton for AllShadow.com, bringing you an introduction to the G1. One of the great features of the G1 is the capacitive touchscreen. On top of that, there's also a trackball and a full QWERTY keyboard hidden under the screen. First, let's go over removing the battery and SIM card. Simply slide open the screen and press on the battery release latch until the back cover comes off. Be careful not to scratch the 3.2 megapixel camera lens. You can remove the battery now. It's useful to get an extra battery for long trips when you want to watch some movies. Now press on the SIM card sliding it towards the battery compartment and you can remove it and replace it with another SIM card. Once you have replaced the SIM card and battery, press and hold briefly on the red end key to power the phone back on. The G1 is capable of handling micro SDHC cards up to the currently available 16 gigabytes. To replace your current card, slide open the keyboard and using your fingernail, pull on the storage card cover until you can see the storage card. Then using a pen or paper clip, carefully press on the storage card to pop it out. These are really small, so be careful not to lose it. Take your new storage card and slide it back in and using the pen or paper clip, carefully press on the storage card until it pops back into place. Put the cover back into place and you're ready to go. The G1 will automatically recognize the new storage card. The G1's hardware buttons have multiple functions. Pressing and holding on the green send key will activate the voice dialer. You can press the back key to exit this. Pressing and holding on the home key will bring up a list of recently used applications. You can select them by touching the screen or using the trackball. You can also exit this menu by pressing the back key. Pressing and holding on the red end key will bring up a short settings menu where you can switch the phone to silent or power it off. The G1 has a customizable desktop. To customize it, just press and hold on a blank area. A menu will pop up. You can change your wallpaper by selecting wallpaper and then wallpaper gallery or pictures if you have some on your phone that you'd like. In the wallpaper gallery, just scroll left to right and choose the image that you want and then hit the set wallpaper button. You can add extra widgets like a clock, picture frame, or search field. You can also add handy shortcuts like folders, bookmarks, a contact, Gmail label, or your favorite playlist. When you get a chance, go to the Android market and install AnyCut. You can add a link to a direct call, text message, activity, or a custom shortcut. Shortcuts to your favorite applications can also be added to the desktop, making your G1 even easier to use. Just click on it, and it'll be added to the desktop. You can also do this from the application menu by pressing and holding on the application. A handy feature is adding a folder to the desktop and then grouping your like applications in the folder. This helps keep your desktop neat and organized. You can rename your folders by opening it and clicking on the folder tab. You can also throw items away by pressing and holding on them and dragging them to the trash. The G1 comes with a powerful browser that can have up to 8 windows open at once. You can view the desktop version of your favorite sites or use the preloaded bookmarks to view optimized versions of many sites. Google Maps has a My Location feature that finds where you are using the G1's GPS. To enable the GPS, go to your desktop, press the menu button, select settings, then select security and location, and check the box for enable GPS satellites. To see your location, open Google Maps, press the menu button, and tap on My Location. It might take a few minutes to find your position if you are indoors. There are several map views available, the standard map, satellite, traffic, and street view. Go to a location, select street view, and you can take a virtual look around the destination before you even get there. Say you want to go to New York, take a look around, look up at the buildings, or you can even look around the street. You can also search for nearby businesses or get directions. You can even get them from your current location, from the contacts, or from your history. That's it for now. Join us next time when we show you how the G1 works as a Frisbee. Until then, I'm Mike Benton for AllShadow.com.